What's up YouTube and welcome back to a new Unity tutorial. Today you will learn something that not every Unity developer knows about. And that is how to dynamically add content to your games. In other words, we will create a script to place content in our scene. The punchline is that these changes will be permanent as our script will run in edit mode and not in play mode. This can be beneficial in many different ways. This can come in handy when you are trying to make changes in your scene to different game objects. Maybe you want to change the shader for all your environment objects, or maybe you want to extend the Unity editor to create a customized level for you. All this is achievable with little effort using the execute in edit mode attribute and Unity handles. We just created a new Unity project. And I'm going to import an asset from the asset store just for visuals. You can search for it in the Unity asset store. It's called Gridbox Prototype. It's one of my favorite assets. It's very helpful when it comes to prototyping stuff and it's free. It has a lot of cool materials and textures. Since I already have this asset, I will click on open in Unity. After that, Unity will automatically open and the package manager window will pop up. If you don't see the package directly, like in my case, then navigate to My Assets. The package manager will then display all the packages that are linked to your account. And if you still can't find it, you can search for it by name using the search bar on the top right hand side. Once you find it, click on Download, then Import. Since I already downloaded it, I will just click on import. Unity will then start importing the package right away. And wait for it until it's done importing. For that, you can just close the package manager window. And if you go to the project tab now, you can see that a folder containing the package we imported was added to our project files. And now we're ready to go. First, let's create a plane. This will act as our ground prefab. I will call it ground. Let's give it a material from the package that we imported. From the prototype grid folder under the resources materials folder. I'll pick one of the nice green materials and drag and drop it into our plane. And while I'm at it, I'll create a new folder for my prefabs called prefabs. Navigate inside the new folder and drag and drop the ground or game object into the prefabs folder making it a prefab. Then I will just remove the ground game object from the scene. And finally I will create a new folder for my script called scripts. And inside of it, I will create a new script called Scene Setup. Then let's open the script in Visual Studio. Quick pause. So I built this complete Unity Masterclass course in which you are going to learn how to build real games and how to build them from scratch. So you're going to learn how to build a platformer game, how to build a Space Invaders clone, how to build a Fruit Ninjas clone and optimize it for mobile and export it for mobile as well how to build a first-person shooter game, and finally how to build a tycoon game similar to Adventurist, which is an endless game. So if you want to become a real game developer, definitely check out the course. You can find the link in the description and you will get the course with a huge discount, so don't hesitate, as you will not only get the course, but you will also get it in a structured manner with all of the code, as well as a Q&A section with a five-star support. So get the course now. I hope to see you there. Let's start off by defining a few variables. First, I'll need to define a reference for the prefab we created earlier. Let's call it plain prefab. To make our script customizable, I will define two float variables to control the size of the map we're going to create from the editor. 
Then I will create two float variables, size x and size z. We will use size x and size z to determine the size of our map that we are going to create using the plane prefab. Finally, to keep the scene organized, we will need a private game object called parent, which will act as the parent game object for our planes. Then I will create a public method that is going to handle the logic of creating our map. I will call it scene setup. First, we need to check if our parent game object is not null, which means we already created our map. In that case, we want to destroy the parent game object and that will also destroy its children. Then we will recreate our map. To create the map, we will start by creating a new parent game object. If we reach this point in the code, then we either didn't have a map or we already destroyed it. We will call the new game object parent by passing the name as a string to the constructor. Then we will need two or four loops to create our map as a grid. One loop for the x axis and the second for the z axis. We will need a temp game object. I will call it go or go. I'll use the instantiate method to create game objects using our prefab. Then I'll pass the prefab reference. As well as the position of the plane. And we will multiply the i and j by 10 since the mesh of the default Unity plane is 10 times 10. Finally, I will set the rotation to quaternion.identity, which means no rotation. Then we will set the parent of the new game object to be our parent game object. And to keep track of our planes, we will give each plane a unique name. which is going to be ground plus the value of i and j. Inside the update method, we will check if the execute was set to true. If that was the case, then we will first call the setup scene method, and then we will set the execute bool back to false, so we don't keep creating our map every frame. All right, now back in Unity. Let's set up the script. We will create a new game object called scene setup. And then I will add our script into our scene setup game object. Now we need to set up the scripts field from the editor. Then the size X and size Z to five. Let's hit play. Then I will set the execute to true and our map or planes are created. I will change the size x and size z to 10 and 15 and set execute to true again. Let's try something smaller like 3 times 3. If we exit the play mode, all our changes are gone. Because it's a normal script, Unity won't save the changes our script makes during the play mode. To fix that, we will need to make the script run in edit mode. So back to Visual Studio. To do that, we need to add an attribute to our class called execute in edit mode. Save the script and now back to Unity. So select the scene setup game object, hit execute and boom. Now we have our map in edit mode, which means we can't lose it. Even if we enter the play mode and exit again, Let's try and change the size of our map and hit execute. This is cool and everything, but what if we want to add more options like changing the material of our planes or maybe add trees? This is where handles come in handy. All right, so I'm using the keyword handles quite a bit and handles are custom 3D grid controls 
and drawings in the scene view. Actually, we've been using them in Unity the whole time. So if we create and select an empty game object in the scene, we will see Unity handles in action. These arrows that we use to add it to the position of our game objects are called handles. Unity also uses handles to allow us to edit other components like colliders. To create our own components that can be modified using handles, we will need to create an editor script. So let's jump back to Unity. Since handles extends the Unity editor, we need to code them as an editor extension. Editor scripts must be put inside a folder called editor, and that's case sensitive here. So let's go ahead and create a new folder in the root of our project called editor. Inside the editor folder, I will create a new script called scene setup handle. Open a script and let's jump to Visual Studio. Since this is going to be an editor script, we don't need any of the mono behavior event methods. We need to import the editor namespace, however, and make the script extend the editor class instead of mono behavior. We need to add an attribute to our class called custom editor. We also need to provide the type of component we want our handle to target, which is going to be the scene setup script we wrote. Since we might have more than one scene setup script in case we need to edit more than one map, we will now set the custom editor attribute to can edit multiple objects. Similar to mono behavior scripts, the editor scripts have an event method similar to the onGUI method called onSceneGUI. This is going to be the method which we will use to update and deal with the handle logic. Unity editor scripts that deal with scene objects have an, a property called target, which is going to be a reference to the scene setup game object being inspected or selected. Since the target property is of type object, we need to cast it to scene setup. We will store the casted object into a variable to keep track of it. Our handle will be a clickable cube that will appear in the scene view when we select the game object with a scene setup component attached to it. Because of that, we will need to define a few variables to store the location, size and clickable area of the cube handle. So first we need a vector three called cube handle pose, which is going to be the same position as the scene setup game object plus two units offset upwards. Then we will use two float values. The first is going to be the cube handle size. We will set it to 2F. The second is cube handle pick size, clickable handle area, which is going to be twice the size of our handle size. Our handle will act as a button and will return true on the on scene GUI event that we're clicked on similar to how the buttons created inside the onGUI method works. We will construct our handle using an if statement, which we will pass to it a few parameters, including the variables we just prepared. We will pass the cube handle pose, no rotation and the cube handle size. Finally, we will set our handle to a cube handle. If this handle was clicked, let's first print something onto the console. And then lastly, we will call the setup scene method from our scene setup component, which if you remember, we used to create our map. Let's test it in our editor. Let's first delete any maps we have from before, thanks to our execute in edit mode, and then select the scene setup game object. Then a wild cube will appear. Open the console tab and click on the cube. Our map is now created and we got a log in the console. Perfect. So let's resize our map. Oops, we have an error. So this is because we are using destroy in a method, which we are calling from an editor script and this is a no, no. So let's head back to Visual Studio to fix it. The destroy method will set the game object we are destroying at the end of the frame but editor scripts are not called every frame. 
It depends on how frequently our scene view is being updated or changed. Instead, we will use destroy immediate, which will destroy our parent immediately. Save the script and back to Unity. Now, let's clear the console and test again. Because we keep destroying our parent game object before we recreate the map, even if we spend click the cube handle, we won't have any issues. This way, if we need to add any extra features, we just need to add the spawning logic in our scene script and create another handle for it. All right, so that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please leave a like if you like the video and subscribe for more cool programming tutorials. And I will see you in the next video.